Okay, good evening everybody. We're gonna get started uh, just past seven. Um, this is the select board meeting for Monday, April 3rd. And I will just introduce who I have with me. I have Ellen Rosenfeld, our clerk, uh, Craig Schultz, our vice chair. I am Erin Underhill, the chair. And then we also have Karen Bure DeMarzo, our assistant town administrator, HR manager, and Mike Kaczynski, our town administrator. Um, we do have um, a number of announcements to start with, um, so I will get right into that. Uh, the first one I have is the Niagara Coffee House will be having a, an event on Saturday, April 8th at 8 p.m. Uh, the main uh, focus is Amy Fairchild um, with Thomas Giuliano and Jeff St. Pierre with a special guest of Hobo Cat, so it sounds like that would be a fun evening. Um, we also have the Easter egg hunt hosted by the rec department that's been postponed from this past weekend. So that will be Saturday, April 8th um, at 11 a.m. Uh, we also wanted to recognize said Millis Recreation Department. Um, they won the Recreational Community Impact of the Year Award for 2023. So congratulations. Uh, they, that department does just such an excellent job. Chris and Erin are fantastic, and we can't thank you enough for all you do for our community. So congratulations and thank you. Um, also coming up on Saturday, April 29th, it's Millis Beautification Day, Don Reynolds Millis Beautification Day. So it's Saturday, April 29th from 9 to noon. Um, there is information on the website and um, waivers that you can fill out and uh, sign up to work a site. Um, continuing on with announcements, there is also a Millis Townwide Yard Sale coming up on Sunday, April 30th. The proceeds will support Rosie's Place. And there is a QR code to sign up on the poster, and this is all posted on our website, right? Yes, and that's one of the senior projects for this year from the yes. high school seniors. So you'll see a lot of senior projects coming up now to support. So keep an eye out. Um, and then just um, to make sure everyone's aware that coming up is the spring annual town meeting, which is going to be very important to have attendance at. That's going to be Wednesday, May 3rd at 7.30 in the Middle High School Auditorium. So I encourage everybody to go to that meeting. Uh, it will be essential for participation. Um, we also have the annual town election coming up on Monday, May 8th at, um, at the town hall in the gym. And the hours for election day are 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Um, let's see. And that is it for announcements. Um, going into our scheduled um, section. We're not doing the carnival, correct? Right now? Next week. That's next, next week. week, okay. So we'll be moving that to next week. Geared up for motion. <laughs> You're all ready for it. <clears throat> okay. So we're right on time. Um, and actually we're um, gonna hold off while we all hear the motion. Sure. Okay. So um, ask that to be held off till next week. Okay. There's just some paperwork we needed to get on. Oh, all right. Okay. So just a slight edit to the agenda. Um, we do have at 7.05 some appointments. People. Thanks, Ellen. Okay. So right now we're going to do some an appointment for the um, Council on Aging. Uh, we received um, a recommendation from the Council on Aging to fill a position um, and the council has um, recommended that we appoint Loring Barnes to the Council on Aging. Uh, there were many reasons um, that they have requested Loring be appointed, um, including helping with the new search for a senior center director, um, her experience in communication and marketing and public relations, and select board experience were all noted as reasons. Um, so that, that, is the first, um, that is the first part of this appointment. Secondly, we, did, we were notified that there was a resignation on the Council on Aging, so there is actually a second slot open. We did receive three applicants. We received Loring and Wayne and Joyce. So I guess my question for tonight is, um, are we going to entertain a motion to add a second member while we're 
appointing the first one. We have a member, Elizabeth, do you want to come up and comment on that? Uh, sure. I thought, um, okay. So uh, when we, we talked to all three candidates, but as a board, when we met, we didn't know that there was a resignation. Mm -hmm. So um, we did not, um, as a board, make an, a, a, a further recommendation. So I think what we'd like to be able to do is move ahead with Loring, and then at our next meeting in April, talk about who's the best candidate to, to fill the open slot. Okay. All right, I'll make a motion to appoint Lauren Barnes to the uh, Council on Aging. Second. So I moved and seconded to appoint Lauren Barnes to the Council on Aging. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Um, we are early. It's, it's not a hearing, I don't think. It's not a hearing. Is it a hearing? No. Should we wait for the 715 or can no, we do no, that No, he's now? here. He's okay. Here. okay. All right. Okay. All right. So the next thing we have is the review and approval of a sewer extension application for Winter Street. Thank you, Madam Chair. So um, you have, in your packet, you have a, a sewer extension. Um, there's a, an older home that's going to be turned up, torn down? No, it's uh, remodeled. It's going to remodel it. Um, and um, Ronaldo would like yeah. to uh, include sewer um, in the map. You have a map of where it would be connected to. Um, we still have to work a few things out where it's working in the public right of way. We'd have to, you know, if, if, if accepted and you give the license for him to do that, uh, the permit, uh, we still have to go through town council to make sure that, you know, there's bonds where he's cutting the street. It's a little different than just, you know, taking it off the street. Um, and in that, there's still, uh, there's three stubs total. Uh, there's one for his house and there's two going off into two uh, vacant lands, yeah. properties? No, it's uh, There's the other one, house, yeah. yep. Um, but it's like I, I, I you know, it's, it's gonna be in that purgatory group of, of, of uh, houses that just have no, uh, <laughs> have no rights to it. Um, so I don't know uh -huh. if there's a need to, I mean, the, there's more road to be cut up if, the, if, if, and there's gonna be more paving that he's gonna have to do uh, if, if you approve it. Um, so I mean, if if, if approved, you, you you're approving through three sewer stubs, because the general law previously would be that when you run a sewer down the street, you would give each possible land a sewer stub. Okay. Um, Ronaldo, I don't know if we officially introduced you. This is Ronaldo oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Sorry, Faria. Right. He is <laughs> the property owner of yeah. 38 Winter Street. Okay. So that's what we're talking about. Okay. Um. I don't even know. Do you have questions? Uh, yeah, I don't understand the purgatory comment. Well, that's he would be in the group that you don't have uh, put a, set, set aside for uh, the calculations to keep oh, that. Oh, he's not by right. Oh, okay. right. should be a new yeah. usage. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you're asking for three hookups. No, he's asking for one for the property, but our general law is previously before the uh, the new went into effect. It was always we would put a stub. To anybody to on the, the way? Correct. So there were two on the way? And his would be the third. Yes. Okay. And those aren't, those other two homes aren't owned by you? No. They're no. others. Okay. And they're not tying in. We would just drop the stub into their yard. Right. When they tied in, there'd and be the fees and everything else. We don't, we don't count them even though there's a stub there at that point. Right. Not. Well, we will. We'll have to count the calculation of, oh, no, that's right. No. We don't no. count them anymore. Right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, just that's the part, that's yeah. a purgatory yeah. comment. Got it. Yeah. Got it. I knew where you were getting to. <laughs> All right. Okay. I'll make a motion to and, uh, 64, to allow 64 Exchange Street to... Uh, no. Nope. No. No. 38 Winter 38 Street. 38 Winter Street. Yeah. I got one page ahead. I apologize. 38 <laughs> Winter Street. I'm like 64 Street. <laughs> uh, 38 Winter Street to uh, connect to the uh, Millis Public Sewer. And that would be ten pending... Um, right. Town Council. The permit that's pending necessary the permit. permitting. Permit. And, uh, that's all. Yeah. yeah. And, and including the two other stubs, yep. right? And then the other two stubs to be installed into the, yeah, to be installed. Okay. Yeah. Second. Um, it's been moved and seconded to approve the sewer extension application for 38 Winter Street pending um, appropriate permits and town council yep. approval, et cetera. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Thank you.
I know, right? Yeah, yep. it's like a big okay. day. Okay. <laughs> so the next thing we have is to discuss plans for 64 Exchange Street, which is the Lansing Millis building. Um, we've had a number of discussions about this um, during our meetings and um, at, in other committee meetings as well. And what we're looking, what I'm looking for tonight is for us to take a vote on a general direction for the PVC to be able to move forward with doing something with this property. Um, oh, go ahead. So um, I've met several times on site. I've been talking to, uh, when you say the PVC, you mean the? Permanent Building Committee. Oh, who might be meeting with? Enterprise, Enterprise, Enterprise no. CPC, Community Conservation. Preservation. Yeah. No. Oh, the community Preservation? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we need better names. We really need better names. And, and the There's CPAC yeah. and CPC. We yeah. have two CPC. So um, I met uh, with a lot of people out there. I've spoken with the building inspector. And there are three pieces to this puzzle that I think. Um, first of all, it's an incredible building. It is sound. Um, it is, I know people have conce conceive that it's a mess. It's not. It's solid. Um, it needs, most of the stuff it needs is, is aesthetic, to be honest. And that includes a new roof, which I think would be one phase. And it is deteriorating, so that would be the first piece of the puzzle. The second piece would be the siding and the trim. The good news is there isn't a lot of siding in front because it's almost all stone. It's just a gorgeous building. And then the third piece of the puzzle will be the interior. Uh, and the interior is, um, is mostly aesthetic. I mean, there's some cracking, but you get a good painter in there and they can V it out, smush it, and paint it. So the two exteriors. Is that the wind? Yeah. Yeah, it's on the Is the window open? It's open. Oh, that's why. It's cracked open. Gotcha. Um, the two exteriors, I, I think that we should um, start to look at quickly, more, more uh, sooner than later. And the interior can wait. So I'd like to sit down with Mr. Gianpietro and Mr. Kuczynski and over the next few weeks and really drill down and get a plan uh, for monetary and time. Okay. So I think, so I'll just kind of plant a seed here. Let's, Go ahead. So um, what we'd ultimately like to see with the building is to, and again, you don't have to agree with me, I'm just making a statement, okay. is that we'd like to see a tenant in there and have the building in a condition that could house a tenant. Yes. Yeah. Um, so the first, the first step is that there is money, state money, that could go to the first phase of this, which is stabilizing it and fixing the roof. Yes. So I'd like a, a couple things. I'd like to put forth a statement from the board that we'd like the PBC to move forward with that work. Um, and then secondly, to put out an RFP or whatever else would be needed to start looking at um, the rest of the building becoming into a condition that could house a tenant. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's so, the goal, is to yeah. make it tenable. So that, I think, is enough information for the PBC to, to get rolling with, yes. with some parts of this. Yes. So that's what I would like to see us do. And, yes. and I think the important part is, um, I think that putting a tenant other than the town offices or town use in there. Uh, is, yes. Yeah. Because that keeps popping up, and I don't yeah, think no. that's a good use for the building. No. Yeah. no most I think fixing the exterior, as you said, yes. Um, getting the roof first, use whatever grants we have, and then uh, find a rental tenant. Yes. Okay. Madam Chair, I have a comment if I could. Um, sure. I have one question. Hold on one second. Could you take that yeah, do we take all Wait of a minute. No, hold on. Nope, not doing comments. Hold on. Yes. Yeah. Okay, we're not doing comments tonight. Sorry. At all? No, not at on all. On anything? On anything. The budget? Not the budget. The public comment time was last week, so we're not taking comments tonight on the budget. With all due respect, this document in its form was not available last week. Okay. This document. 
that one. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, so um, I will take a motion, or I will make a motion. I'll make a motion. I, I move that for the Lansing Millis Building that we authorize the PBC to um, use the grant money to stabilize the building and fix the roof, as well as look forward to what work is necessary to have the building leasable. Second. It's been moved and seconded to authorize the PBC to move forward with uh, work on the Lansing Millis Building as stated. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Okay. So the next item we have is to vote on and finalize the fiscal year 24 budget recommendation. So as I just stated a, a minute ago, last weekend, last week, weekend, I don't know what day it is. Last week we had uh, public comment for the budget after we had heard from the school committee. Um, this week we are not taking public comment and we will be discussing and finalizing the budget recommendations um, based on all of the um, discussion last week and the other materials that we have available. I do want to start off saying that we have received a number of emails from um, many people in town. Um, some are teachers, some are parents, yeah. some are concerned citizens. We've, it's been a large volume of emails. So what, we'd, what I'd first like to do is acknowledge all of that and thank everybody for reaching out and taking the time to email us. Um, I think we all understand the gravity of the situation and um, I just wanted to say thank you for taking that time to reach out. Um, when, at the beginning of this um, budget discussion, I think we're first going to have, um, oh my God, help me with this name. I can. Oh, uh, nope, hold on. Yeah. Uh, John the, the chair of the Capital yes. Planning Committee, <laughs> Thank John you, Barry. Okay, there we go. <laughs> yes, Mr. Barry. I wasn't sure what you're going with. Capital, <laughs> <laughs> to give the Capital like, Planning I saw John there and kept report, looking. Uh, yes. <laughs> to the select board. Yes, the Capital uh, Planning Report. To assist yes. To the Capital process. Beautiful. Mr. Barry. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I totally blanked there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for having me here tonight. And yes, we're one of the two CPCs in town. This is the Capital Planning Committee, not the Community Preservation <laughs> Commission. Or, yeah. So um, you, hopefully you're all familiar with the process. But um, just for those who aren't familiar, so we've got a Capital Planning Committee in town. We've been in place for uh, about six years now. And our job is to um, compile all the capital requests that are coming forth um, to the Select Board and the Finance Committee and uh, try our best to rank them uh, against a, a scale of, of various, um, various issues that we look at. Things like um, you know, public safety, um, state mandates, uh, that sort of thing to determine uh, highest, medium, and lower priorities for, for the town. Um, <clears throat> for this time, this go around, uh, we looked at 10 uh, different projects that were put forward to us. Um, and determined that five of them were at highest priority for the town. Uh, four were medium priorities and one was a lower priority at this time. And I think that's kind of an important point. Uh, the at this time is the important thing. Everything on this list is important. We recognize as something that will almost certainly be needed at some point. Um, the question is when. Uh, so, you know, we try to take that into account in, in our process as we look at things. Uh, so the Five, and, and the other thing I'll say about the process is we try as best as we can when we're determining priority needs to be somewhat agnostic about budget availability. So, uh, and that's not always completely possible to do, but we try to, you know, try, try to uh, rank order things, not necessarily knowing how much budget might be available to do it. So in other words, we won't just take the lowest cost thing and put it at the top of the list because we know we can afford it. Um, so the five highest priority things are on this, the uh, summary page of the report we provided to the, to the select board. Uh, there were five items. So one was a PFAS design for well three. This is a continuation of the process that's been in place over the past few years in terms of getting the uh, filtration systems and the water treatment in place for the, uh, P, for the wells to manage the PFAS issue. We've got... Uh, Excuse second me one minute. I'm sorry, yeah. John. I just wanted to know if you're at home and you're watching on Zoom, this document, these documents are posted on the select board's web page. Um, you can go down and it says agenda packet and agenda materials and you click on it, you can follow along. I just 
want to make sure everyone's aware. Sorry, Thanks. continue yeah, on. No problem. Uh, second is a chlorine and pH analyzer requested by the DBW also for water quality um, analysis. Uh, a couple items related to the library, uh, some building envelope repairs, and also um, replacement of lighting management system at the library. Um, I know um, the library has gone through a process of assessing the building and laying out um, a capital plan for the next several years for various things that need to happen. We do think of the library as a brand new building, but it is not a brand new building. It is 10 plus years old now, so some things are beginning to need some maintenance. Um, and then finally, the last highest priority, the last item on the highest priority list was a new dump truck for the DPW. Uh, that's to do plowing and um, various uh, maintenance uh, jobs around town. Uh, there were four items that were on the medium priority list. Uh, one was a data center upgrade for the school department, as well as a wireless upgrade for the school department. Uh, again, no doubt on the committee's mind that these things are both needed at some point. Um, but just given the timing, we, we just put it slightly lower on our priority list. Uh, some HVAC upgrades for this building, for the VMB building, was on the medium priority list, and also a, a boom lift for the town buildings, which is a you know, mach machine that can reach things up high, basically, uh, to help with certain kinds of jobs. And then finally, the, uh, the lower priority list uh, was one item, which was a trailer for the DPW, which would be used to haul equipment. Uh, around to, to various jobs around town. Uh, so the total of all these items was roughly $800,000 for the entire list. Uh, on that highest priority list, uh, they sum to about $540,000 roughly. Um, we have also included a schedule of um, all the capital needs that are known as of present uh, for the next 10 years for the town. Uh, some of the timing is in uh, to be TBD. Uh, for example, the Lansing Mill, Millis building, an item you just talked about, we've got an item, a placeholder on our list that, that would be something that would need to be addressed at some point. We don't have a de definite time on there in our schedule because we don't know what that is just yet, but we do have a place in there. We've broken up those needs into three categories. So one is around maintenance and repair of existing capital, so that's things like road repairs, replacement of police cars, those sorts of things that you know are just part of the ordinary course of business. Um, some are enterprise system related needs, like the wells, for example, for the town, uh, water and sewer type things. And then there, the third bucket is other needs, which are things that um, are also needed, but would be generally bigger ticket items, um, like again, Lansing Millis Building's an example, middle high school um, renovations would be another <laughs> example that fall into that category and so forth. Um, so the total of all of those items that we've got compiled right now is about $89 million. Um, that's over the next, you know, 10 plus years. Um, and, uh, you know, we keep trying to keep, keep as good a track of these items as we can as we go. It's a very fluid list, I'll say. Uh, the number actually went down slightly, believe it or not, from the last time. So, you got that. Uh, but I'll pause there and happy to take any questions anybody has on the process or the outcomes. Um, Craig or Ellen, any questions? I have sat through the meetings and voted to rank them, so I have no questions. I have answers if you have some, but <laughs> I will say I think the process gets better every year as we do it. Um, I think this year we've had some new people on the committee that have made us rethink how we score things. It used to be nines and ones. Now we're using numbers like five, sevens, threes, sixes. It's, it's, it's a little bit more spread out in our ranking system. I think it's a, a better system. I think we're getting, I think every year it gets better, like you said, and I, and we categorized them slightly differently this year to make it break out between enterprise and the um, yeah. routine maintenance. Because if we don't do the routine maintenance, we really do fall behind and, and it, it doesn't get us ahead. It's not getting ahead. It's having buildings fall apart around us if we don't do routine maintenance. Well, that was one, one comment that you mentioned the library, because I'm, I'm hearing from people that they're so upset that we're, maintaining the library, which is hilarious because people were very upset that we weren't maintaining our buildings for so yeah. long, and they're falling apart. So the library is, how many years? Is it 13? 10 or 11. It's more than 10. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah. Really. So yeah. the maintenance, no matter the reason, is a good thing, and it's always a yeah. good thing. So for those who <laughs> complain that we're maintaining our buildings, just think about what you're saying, because this is what we need to do. Like yeah. Every day. And the library has put together a very thorough plan that goes out many, many years so we can look at it and see what 
every year bubbles up to the must yeah. do, and then you you do them. I mean, that's that's the solution you have to do. Yes. And we should do that with all of our building. I know the school's yes. got a system like that for the new schools, and then you don't get into a point where you're sitting in the building and say, well, everything has to be fixed. Right. You know. So it's a good thing. Yeah. So, Madam Chair, if I could just add, I do attend most of the meetings of the Capital Planning Committee, as does the Finance Director, and it's sort of a, an unsung group. Uh, not, not a ton of people come to their meetings, but uh, they take their work seriously. They do a lot of research. They work closely with the department heads and boards and committees to make sure the report that's submitted every year is thorough and that the projects are vetted well and just want to thank them for the time and effort they put into that work. So. Thank you. All right, thank Any you. Questions? Thank you so much okay. for all the work you do. We sure appreciate is. it. Okay. All right, so moving along to the rest of the fiscal year 24 budget recommendation discussion. Um, we have in our packet a school funding proposal, although we do have plenty of other things to talk about within this, um, but... Do we want to jump to that, or do we want to talk about other funding areas first? I guess the first thing we should possibly talk about is revenue sources, and mm -hmm. I think getting that out of the way. Mm -hmm. um, an item that we've talked about repeatedly for many, um, many meetings is new growth. If remember, new growth has been estimated quite low each of the previous three or four years, where it's um, like last year we estimated 750 and it came in at about twice that. And new growth is an important number because it gives us available funds. This year, the uh, town um, uh, assessor has produced an estimate of 842,000, I believe it was. 851,000. Thank you, I'm working off memory here and I'm trying to do my audit at work too. So I've got other numbers floating around. <laughs> but uh, but uh, we, I I'm, would like to propose that we increase that to 950,000. It's a $100,000 increase from what the assessor has it's come up to. It's 840. 840. 842. Yeah. I thought it was close. Okay. So I've increased that to uh, 950. And the reason is because, as I said, we've been off every year for the, since we started the growth cycle. Um, I'm hoping it continues for one more year, and it's only $100,000 if it doesn't continue. And this is a year when we absolutely can't afford to be conservative with our estimates. So I, I, I'll make a motion that we recommend uh, new growth at 800, we, we budget new growth at $950,000. Second. Moved and seconded to budget new growth at $950,000. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. I'm gonna start at the, I'm gonna jump all the way to the top again. Started at the bottom level, go up to the top now. Okay. Um, the problem we've talked about at every one of these meetings for quite a few months, starting back into uh, the tri board in December and probably before that, has been the special ed um, impact on the schools. And uh, the school committee, and I'm going to round so Steve can shake his head or not, but eight, about $1.8 million deficit coming off of SPED caused because of the impact that special ed is having on the school. Um, we've been pretty honest that we think we can get, we're going to try to get some of that. We can't do all of that. No matter what this committee does, we're constrained by our budgets. We think we've been able to find about $1.3 million that we can put into the schools in two different ways. Um, first way is we'd have the budget grow by 6%, both for the school and the municipal departments. That puts money in the municipal departments and into the school on a permanent basis instead of the typical 4% that we use. So that's equal across the board. The town is not being cut to fund the school. In fact, the town is growing at a higher rate than it's ever grown in the past, in the recent past, since we've started this 4% rule. So both departments are growing by 6%. That puts about $363,000 of that $1.3 million that we're trying to get to into the school budget to start with. HCA funds are going to bring in about another $51,000. Now, that's what we'd put into the budget as a proposal. I wouldn't put more into the budget because that's nice and clean. That keeps the two budgets looking the same. We don't have an 11 or 12% growth in the school budget on paper that we have to explain at town meeting. So I'm proposing, uh, I think the proposal, and I think the, uh, Mike has put this together and I agree with it looking at it, 
is to put a second article on the warrant that uses free cash and stabilization funds to close the gap with the uh, to close the gap with the um, the remainder of the gap or a large portion of the gap. Um, the proposal is to use free cash of five hundred and sixty nine thousand dollars and stabilization fund of four hundred thousand dollars to close that gap. Stabilization fund has been tapped into quite often in the past for snow and ice, um, 500,000 occasionally. We have policies on, on, on uh, stabilization fund. The, stable, the policy says we have to pay it back in three years. We got to use it for non-typical -op, non operating expenses. Now let me go back and be clear. This is only going to solve it for this year. Next year, if there's no more state aid, if there's no other funding sources available, this problem still exists and we're out of money. We cannot go to stabilization a second time. In fact, we have to start paying it back. So that's why we're looking for a one-year bridge to see if the state gets us something. So anyway, if we use the 6% uh, growth, the HCA funds, the free cash, the stabilization, that gets us to $1,384,000 that we can put towards it. Now, I'm going to take a half step, just a baby step back for just a second. I would like to use $30,000 of that free cash to fund the library roof repairs. Because as Ellen pointed out, if we don't do routine maintenance, it's not on the proposed list right now. If we don't do those routine maintenance, that $30,000 issue this year becomes a $150,000 issue next year when the leak has spread and now we have to mold damage and other things. So I would like to modify that proposal that Mike's put together slightly by reducing the free cash from 569 to 538, basically. But I'll let Carol do the official math on that. So you're reducing the, three, the, 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 the number you just said a minute ago to the school. You're taking 30 away to the library. Yes. Got it. Yeah, and I think that we have to do that. I, I, it, was, it was not on the must fund. It was on the must fund items out of the committee, mm -hmm. but it didn't rise to having available funds from this committee. So I'd really like to see that funded. So that, I guess my proposal is, I, I'll break it down to small votes. I'll vote that we, I'll mo make a motion that we increase the school and municipal funding by 6% this year, exclusive of HCA. Okay, now that is this year. It yes. goes back to four. Yes. Correct? The next 6% year. will be part of the base, but the growth will be 4% next year. Okay. But the new base will be 6% this okay. year, 2% higher. Okay. So that would be my first motion that we fund both the school and the, uh, the municipal budgets at 6% this year. basis of this whole thing. So yeah. if we don't vote that, we're, we should just leave. So your answer is I second that. Second. <laughs> there we go. It's been moved and seconded to um, set the growth for the budgets this year by at 6%. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Okay. Um, HCA funds, we've already voted those in, so we don't have to talk about those any further. So then I would, um, then I would make the motion that we fund um, the additional, uh, use 538697 dollars uh, of free cash and 400000 of stabilization to fund the school um, deficit as a separate warrant article, not as part of the budget, which we can get to when we get into the warrant. I might want to amend that. Would we want to maybe put the free cash into the operating budget? I've thought about that, and the optics of doing it that way, there's a couple different reasons I like to keep it clean. It lays a clear basis that we are $930,000 short. Just no way around it, $930,000 deficit. That's the gap that has to be closed. Um, this way, both budgets are growing by 6%. It el eliminates okay. any confusion about how people look at it. Mm -hmm. um, we're not going to get questions from people about why is the school growing by, math in the head, 9%, and the municipal is growing by 6%. They'll both grow by the same amount. Okay. And then it lays a very clear amount that we need. Now, as I said, that's, that's the, def the delta. That's what needs to be funded next year somehow. Now, the other part of that is if the state does come through with any funding, and I would be optimistic if I said $200,000, I believe that's an optimistic number, not a realistic number, but if that came through, 
we wouldn't take that out of stabilization because we wouldn't have to we wouldn't have to go into that. So additional money that comes in from the state to offset this problem goes back to pay us back first. It doesn't become an additional two hundred thousand onto the base yeah. because we've made a huge sacrifice going yeah. into stabilization. Okay. So I guess that's okay. that's my thoughts on it. So. Um, so you, did you make a motion? I'll make a motion that we use $538,697,000 and of free cash and $400,000 of stabilization to uh, fund the school um, deficit through a warrant article with the understanding that any additional state money that comes in is used to pay back stabilization first. Uh, second. All right, it's been moved and seconded to um, have a separate article um, to fund the schools with $538,697 free cash and $400,000 from stabilization. Um, any additional monies received from the state would go to pay back stabilization. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. I just want to make one um, comment on that part in that <clears throat> The operating budget, when that comes do, comes forth at town meeting, that's a simple majority. So the majority of the town that votes for the, the budget, the budget passes. Um, for anything that involves stabilization, it requires a two-thirds vote to pass. So that's very important information to have at town meeting, which is why participation would be essential. <clears throat> So that's about the best we can do on the funding there. And again, one year bridge, hopefully something comes through next year. Even with that, there's going to be cuts that the school has um, enumerated. I think now that they have the official uh, um, amounts, they will detail those cuts and start explaining what this all means. And I think there needs to be preparation um, in case the $969,000 article doesn't pass. One consideration would be to move to reconsider and exclude stabilization if it passes by a simple majority, but not a uh, two-thirds majority. But um, that's to be determined at town meeting. Do we have more to discuss on the budgets, though? I think so. I think we should talk about the request that came in from the Council on Aging. Uh, yes. So. Um, I had asked for some additional information in our packets. Um, well, it's not in our packets, right? I had, I had asked for some additional information about the COA budget requests. Um, there were, there was two requests. There's requests that, a request for a new position, and there's requests to add hours to the senior director, the outreach, and the dispatch. Um, Adding those um, hours would total $14,619.80. Um, the new position request is $55,764.80 plus benefits. Um, we, are, we are currently seeking a new director for the Council on Aging. And um, in town, we've been working to make positions here uh, more desirable so that we're able to attract talent. Uh, we have lost a few positions and looking to, you know, be attractive to potential candidates to fill those positions. Um, with that, if we have the available funding that we could put towards it, I would want to at least fund the additional hours so that the Council on Aging is staffed with their current staff levels to appropriate hours so that when a new Council on Aging director comes in, there are, you know, appropriate work hours for those positions and then they can work towards further defining what they want for a new <coughs> position. If I struggle with adding a position while there are going to be some cuts elsewhere. Counterpoint. Okay. So I feel as if uh, they're going to be looking for a new director, uh, still working toward uh, another option for a senior center. Um, 
not having a program, first of all, they've been asking for a program director. This is year number 19. Last year, I believe that there were some commitments made to give them that position. Now, I know this, the school problem is upended, you know, a lot, which rightfully or irrightfully doesn't really matter. Um, but I think that in order to present, um, to get a new uh, director, and we have no program director, I just don't, I'm, I'm wondering what, what quality, what kind of pickings we're going to get if we're not showing some strength down there in the basement. So, um, now I know the 55, 764s is too much, um, but I thought that we could give them, I don't know, 40 or 45, I don't know what it buys. Well, that that's the thing. Yeah, doesn't. I don't know. I so guess it would be would, the if, yeah. If we were just to give these hours, right? I don't say just; it's it's, it's significant. Um, when do we look at the program director again? In the fall? I mean, is that we possible? can look at it in the fall? We can look at it for next year's budget for sure. But in the, because next year we won't be pushing all this extra growth into this school plug, so we will have money available in the fall. In, the, in next year's fiscal budget, we may have money available in the fall, depending on how or if the state comes through with anything or what other solutions are proposed. So this, this first one, the senior director, what's, who's the senior director? Is that Patty's position right yeah. now? The senior yes. center director. So she's looking for four and a half hours for herself who's leaving in a week, or was she looking? Well, I think not, that's for the, it's new it's for the position. Yeah. It's for the yeah. position. Okay. I think that's important to do. How many hours is the senior director now? Um, the senior director right now is, uh, I believe. It's an odd number. Um, I, don't. I think it's 35 and a half. I think this would bring it to 40. Okay, but if you took the 30, if you didn't give that, and you took that 9,300 and added it to 40, you'd get to 50, wouldn't 50,000 buy you a decent program director? I mean, I don't know. The, the number put yeah. forth is the 55, 7, 64, 80 plus benefits, which we right. also have to take into take account. Into but yeah. um, I don't I don't know what, you, what you'd get what you for get? 40. Well, I know, I know. No, yeah. I know. I yeah. know. I think the minimum we have to do is the um, hours. Okay. And then it's a question of do we can't should we do more and that's we got to do something I, I i just we got to get something and i'd rather we, we, we will allow one comment just no we can't we i'm can. sorry yeah we can't but i know it's fine yeah um but this would increase the hours for the director which might make it more attractive to get the director as well oh okay. as a consideration just throwing that out there right Madam Chair, yes. I uh, just want to add one little point. As we're looking for a new director, if you're going to hold off and wait and look for somebody in the fall that may potentially have funds, this may actually be something that brings someone in, say that we are building a new department and we're looking to get somebody. And what do they look for their advice once they get settled in here? What do we need for program director? How many hours do we need? We don't know that yet because we don't have a new person. Um, so that might be something to think about if we're holding off until fall. Might not be that bad of a okay, thing. If we yeah. can revisit this, I'm in the game fall. to revisit. Okay. Yeah. So, what was the hours amount? <clears throat> uh, Fourteen thousand six hundred nineteen dollars and eighty cents. So round that up to six twenty. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, you round it up to fifteen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what? I will. I'm going to. Um, I'm going to make a motion that we increase the council on aging budget. Um, uh, by 15000 for hours and other items. Second, yeah. before you change your mind. No. Okay, it's been moved now. I'm sorry, I have a question. Yeah. Where's that coming from? We'll get there. Okay. It's been moved and seconded to increase the um, current staff hours for current staff positions in the senior center uh, by $15,000. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. All right. So now sources. We got to find fifteen thousand. This is where I'm going to turn it back over to Mike. Yeah. So and I'll give him back his package too. So, Madam Chair, um, as um, 
one the only other avenue short of just cutting expenses out of another budget or trying to adjust hours out of another budget um, right now we are uh, in the process of uh, the board has been in the process for a number of years of right sizing or adjusting the uh, DPW general fund and enterprise fund budgets this budget did contemplate um, uh, doing about $75,000 in adjustments to that um, if you push this out for an additional year to finish those adjustments you could reduce that by 15,000 otherwise um, I'd have to sit down with the finance director again and, mm -hmm. and go review the budgets for other possible cuts but that would still grow the DPW by $60,000 uh, approximately yeah yes. yeah in, in so far as the balance, the balance, not of the, the not the not the not the gross, right. but the balance. Right. Right. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Okay. So I would say that that's probably the best I'll, option. I'll make the motion to reduce the DPW correction by by fifteen thousand, leaving us almost there this year, but not quite. So okay. yeah, six, sixty thousand dollars into the DPW, not seventy five thousand. Okay, moved and seconded to take 15000 from that DPW budget line item. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Um, did we need to vote on the capital that we were discussing? I think we get to the warrant. Uh, That'll be we the get warrant. To the yeah, warrant. You, you don't have to take a final um, but uh, vote on that tonight. You'd have to have a final vote by next week, but certainly... I would encourage discussion if you have thoughts and comments on that. Um, certainly it helped provide some guidance for the Finance Committee as they're going along their review as well. But that's already factored in, right? The yes, ones yes, that that's already all factored in. Talked about. That okay. won't require, uh, yeah, basically as presented as a proposal plus the 30000 adjustment for, for the, the library. library project, that's already in the budget. Okay. So unless you want any other changes, the budget would accommodate that. Um, okay. With the transfers of um, closing out a number of old articles, yes. that those funds are no longer needed. Okay. Yeah, this list <clears throat> doesn't exactly match the priority list that the uh, Capital Planning Committee came up with, and the reason for that, I'm sure John's curious, is um, <laughs> is uh, all of these things have old warrant articles that relate to them. So there's money left in some school warrant articles that we no longer need that can be put towards the wireless upgrade. So it's not, it's not any outlay of available funds. You can't take a school warrant article and put it into uh, a DPW truck, which are both on the list. But you couldn't put it into a trailer. So you've got to use it. There's got to be some nexus that you can justify the move. And, and unused warrant articles, these are projects that were done, completed, and came in under budget, typically, is where this money comes from. Or were no longer needed because they were something else caused us not to need them. It's not that we're not doing some work that we're planning on. We are no longer planning to do the work or have done the work, and it's been less expensive. So for the most part, um, it, it is close to what the uh, Capital Planning Committee put together on this list. Um, adding back the library certainly moves it more in line with what they proposed. Okay. okay. Do we have um, more budget items that we need to address right now? Um, I do not believe there are any other critical items um, that you need to address this evening. Um, obviously, there's a few items under the under the annual town meeting warrant I okay. want to discuss, but not under the budget. Okay. All right. And anything else from you two, or are we good to move on? Ready to move on. Good. All right. The next agenda item is to um, open the town meeting warrant um, to discuss and or remove warrant articles and subsequently to close. I'll make a motion to open the town meeting warrant. Second. It's been moved and seconded to open the town meeting warrant. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It is open. Mr. Gazinski. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, we have an updated draft of the annual town meeting warrant um, in your packet. Uh, just a few updates uh, and uh, some information that's been filled in since your last meeting. Under Article 1, um, you have um, the prior year uh, unpaid bills. Uh, you have a full list of those bills in your packet that total $8,235.59. That includes all the bills from the uh, general fund and enterprise funds. Um, 
the next item of note um, for the board is um, Article 10. Um, and again, these, these capital items um, are based both on the Capital Planning Committee's um, review as well as um, the funding sources and availability of funds. Um, all the um, water and sewer enterprise requests are listed there. That funding comes from those sources. Uh, as well as um, the dump truck with plow and sander uh, and the heavy duty 10 ton trailer. Uh, and I know the board just added the library um, exterior repairs. Um, so that'll increase that amount by 30,000. Uh, but that would uh, encapsulate the full article at this point. Mm -hmm. And again, if that's something the board is supportive of as, as proposed, you could vote that tonight, um, and if there's any needed changes next week, you could do that. But at least you'd have you'd have given the finance committee the knowledge of what the proposal is for their work. Yeah, why don't we do that? Yeah, I'll I'll make a motion to um, uh, uh, to include Article 10 at, um, with the addition of the library. Second. Moved and seconded to include Article 10 with the addition of the thirty thousand dollars for the library repairs. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. And that's not to say the other item, I think the other big item on there was the lighting system for the library that can be considered um, in the next free cash tranche. Um, Madam Chair, the next item is Article 13. That's just new language mm -hmm. um, as far as the request of resolution from the, uh, the Energy Committee. Uh, and the next item is the, for the board's consideration to remove Article 16 the uh, other post-employment benefits article, as we don't anticipate any funds available to fund that article. Um, it probably makes the most sense just for the board to remove that article at this time. Can I, I, I tend to agree with you, but I have a question. We funded stabilization in November. Did we fund OPEB in November as well? I don't recall. We did, okay. And really that is 2020 for free cash that we used. So uh, I even reading our, our, our statements on free cash and stabilization, or not free cash, uh, stabilization and OPEB, I think we're in compliance with all of those as far as if we don't fund stabilization, we have to fund OPEB because we funded it with this year's, we funded both with this year's money in November. So I'll make a motion to remove Article 16. Second. Moved and seconded to remove Article 16. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great, thank you. Um, Madam Chair, Article 17, I just want to make a note that we do have in there for the establishment of a special education stabilization fund, um, but there's no money available at this time to, based on the numbers put forward to actually put any funding in it, but I would still recommend the establishment of the fund. The town could consider putting funds into that you know, at the fall town meeting if funds are available. Okay. And have we added the article, I'm sorry, I should have. the school? The school. I was just going to say that. Oh, yeah, we need the, to add The that. 900. You voted it, but you need you to add it. You voted this evening, so I yeah. will need to add that in. Okay. Um, I believe you voted to add it already. So we did we, vote we, to we add We will add that. We proposed yeah. adding it, but now that we're in the but warrant, now that officially. You, the warrant, you should make a, a yes, I agree. I'll you make a motion that. Add yeah. article, a new article four. Yeah, um, I'll make a motion to add a new article um, four. Trust me on the number there. Um, to uh, increase, uh, to, to make available free cash of uh, 569,000. Nope. No. 5, I've lost my notes already. I moved off that page. 539,697. Stabilization. And stabilization of 400,000 to fund, uh, um, to, to use for one time school funding. Yeah. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to add the a new Article 4 for the free cash and stabilization money for the school. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Okay. And um, actually, I forgot to mention it, Madam Chair, but actually, in the and I think in the front of your packet, uh, not the front of your packet, but the front of this section, there was um, sure. proposed changes to the personnel plan, Schedule C, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. um, employee benefits. Um, just for detail for the board, what's listed there, um, there are some changes to just a few sections on longevity, sick leave, sick leave buyback, and vacation leave. Um, these basically uh, put the personnel plan more in line with the collective bargaining agreements in the town. Um, and generally, these, these affect only three full-time employees that uh, fall under this. Uh, 
and also the board, I believe, already had approved a 2% COLA for the, uh, mm -hmm. just, just, just to mention that under the personnel plan. So, um, so just want to uh, make sure the board's aware of it and is supportive of this to move forward um, as part of the warrant for the Finance Committee to review. And, and just to add, there's a couple other just sort of clerical changes on the actual pay schedule where we removed a couple of positions that no longer exist, that type of thing, nothing that's a monetary. Mm -hmm. um, value beyond the 2%. Uh, 2%. Okay. Okay. We don't need to take a vote on that, though, right? No. Okay. No. Not unless there's any, no. any concerns okay. or any questions in regards to that. No? No. no. Okay. Part of the consent, consent article. Yes. Correct. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. um, so we and, can close. And I believe that's it, Madam okay. Chair. Yes. And um, I will be asking the board to approve and sign the final copy of the warrant at your meeting next Monday. Mm -hmm. So I will have the, the final draft drawn up and uh, ready for you prior to your next meeting. Okay, great. Um, I'll take a motion to close. I'll make a motion to close the warrant. Second. Moved and seconded to close the warrant. All those in favor? <coughs> Aye. 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 Sorry. Okay. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Um, the next thing we had was to discuss and assign the Enterprise Advisory Committee really? topics. Ellen, you had um, did, drawn is, those up. Is my, is my letter in here? Yep, it's yes. in the packet. Yes. You, you need a copy? Is. Is at the bottom of my list? Yes. A beautiful list? Keep going. Keep going? Okay. Oof, okay. That's a good looking list. Um, <laughs> so we uh, appointed a, uh, a committee. Mm -hmm. uh, Can't speak. <laughs> Sorry. Anybody here? Jim oh, Jim left. Yeah. Oh my God! I hope he stays in the committee. He discussed it. Um, these are the topics. Yep. Um, I tried to put them in order, but I, I think they're all important. Um, so this yeah. is a, you know, this is this committee. This is important stuff here. I know if you don't, if you don't. Uh, study it, you think, oh, it's nothing. This, these are, this is important. And to have a committee, I'm excited to have a committee that's sole focus is to work on this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, because I would love to have my sole focus work on this because I think it's very interesting. But yeah. you probably don't have a lot of other people that agree with me other than Jim McKay. Um, but Jim, you're going to be working with them. And hopefully we'll drill down on some of this stuff, and uh, and continue the progress from the uh, from the policy. I'm excited. I think yeah. it's a solid list, and I think it's a decent size and decent detail. So I think it'll yeah. give them direction. Um, obviously, we can always give more direction, yeah. um, but I think this is a great place to start and. Um, yeah, I think I, I like it. Yeah, I, I, I think that there's no priority to it. I think it's up to the committee to pretty much prioritize with uh, um, with the staff, you know, town staff to come up with the order they address right. these in because I don't yeah. think there's any wrong place to start on it. Well, possibly Although I do think number four. one would be. Yeah, yeah. number yeah. one. Number one, we can have a quick win. We can get yeah. the HDP know, right? versus copper tubing. Right. <laughs> so it's. Uh, it's Good, all good. Yeah. All right. So, do we need to take a vote to assign that, or was it just a discussion? Yeah, actually, it would be useful to have a vote to forward this to the uh, the committee for their work. Okay. I'll make a motion to forward this to the Enterprise Advisory Committee and uh, have them use this as a chart of work to get started, um, get their first meeting. Awesome. Second. Moved and seconded to authorize the um, Enterprise Committee to get started with this list of topics that's been provided. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Um, board and committee liaison updates. Does anybody have anything? I do. Okay, Helen. Please. <laughs> we have another, we're going to have another contest? No, 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 no. I'm going to win this one. While you have a <laughs> um, Clean it up. So like this. I went to, this is a good um, segue. To a little speech I want to make. I went to the school committee meeting last Tuesday night. 
So we had our last select board meeting last Monday night. In this, it's a packed house, and there was as many people on Zoom. And prior to that, we've had packed houses. And finance committee last week, packed house. Um, the school committee was here in our meeting on Monday night. And everybody asked their questions. They answered most of them, I thought, very well. Um, but at the end of their meeting, they, Steve Catalano, the chair, invited the public to attend their school committee meetings. He let everybody know that they meet every other week on Tuesday night, the school library. And as a matter of fact, he said they were meeting tomorrow night. That was last Tuesday night. I thought to myself, boy, that's going to be a robust meeting. It's going to be exciting. I better get there early. Kathy McGinnis and I were the only two people to show up to that meeting. The school committee was so sure people were going to show up, they rearranged the whole library um, to have a bigger area for people to sit and ask. And I have to say that so many people came and asked questions. I thought that the school committee did a great job answering them. I thought they were as transparent as can be, but there were some they didn't have answers to. And I really did think that people would go on Tuesday night and, and drill down. And again, Kathy McGinnis and I were the only two that went. So it was disappointing. Uh, so there have been a lot of opportunities to, for everybody to check in um, about this issue, this big, huge issue. And, um, and, and you didn't. So they gave another presentation. It was great um, to me and Kathy. It was fun. Um, but I just, I, I, you, if you could take your energy, and we did get a lot of emails. I got some calls. People came into my office. But if you could take some of that energy and attend these meetings and get, you can pointedly ask your question and get your specific answer, not to us. I can't answer for the school committee. Um, I can just go to the meetings like you and listen and try to cipher it, but I'm not that good. Um, if you could take that energy, you know, for the past and moving forward, because we're going to be working on this starting tomorrow yeah. for fiscal 25 um, with the school committee, and you, you all can participate. And to that end, don't we have a letter on the website that people can grab and push? It's not on the website, but we can put it on the website. Yeah. If we want to put it on the website. We should. We, we wrote, talked about it. We, we wrote, wrote a letter. letter. Aaron, you wrote yeah. the letter. Yeah. 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 I wrote the letter that we all signed and was mailed out to the governor, the senator, yeah. and, and the representatives. representatives. Yeah. Yeah. We did talk about that. We can, we we can should put it on the homepage. We, can put where we, we should put, put it on with the addresses. To push them to. Okay. And I believe the school committee's done the same thing. And if they haven't, I'll call them and ask them to. They have their own letter. Send out as, as many of you that have contacted me and my fellow board members. Push it on. I've been a squeaky wheel my whole my whole life. It works. So we should really get a campaign. It's not too late. So that's my my speech on the school committee. Okay. I have no speech. I attended the CPC meeting, Capital Planning Committee meeting, and I will now spend a half hour reciting what John told us in his presentation. <laughs> no, he, um, it, it, it's been a great process. The committee's been good. I think we've gotten good results. Uh, I think it gets better each year, so I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. Yep. And, uh, and then I attended the FinCom, but two of the three of us did, so. Oh, I did too, so, yeah. you know, we matched. Yeah, we match on that one, so we tied. That one, two, Craig, two. Okay. <laughs> Anything else? No. Nope. How about you, Erin? I, I haven't gotten anything. I was out of commission last week. I'm back. You're back. You're back in commission. <laughs> yep. <All> right. <laughs> um, okay. If nothing else on that, uh, we have the approval of draft minutes. I'll make a motion to approve the, wow, this is exciting. What year are we in? 23. The 322 23 and the 327 23 minutes. Holy moly. We may have caught up. I'm not going to say that until I hear it. Second that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Moved and seconded vigorously to approve the draft minutes from March 22nd, 2023 
and March 27th, 2023. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, believe thank it or you, not. Thank you, Victoria Schindler. Yes, yes. thank you, Victoria. Good who's good a job. very, very hard yeah. worker. Yes. We're thrilled are we up to date? We are. And believe it or not, we do not have executive session. Make the motion we adjourn. Second. Moved and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you, everybody, and thank you, thank Millis you. Community Media. Have a great night.